Yo guys, what's going on? Back again with another video from TFW. Today, we are recapping the recent, I think it's game week 18 and 19 of the Premier League. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to I'm gonna let Raf start because I don't think I've been having that great of a time yeah. in I the mean, Premier League so far. Well, we're halfway through the season, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's more or less like the whole half, isn't it? Of the, the whole of the first half of the league. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Um, so, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. Arsenal aren't in the best of forms right now. At the time of recording this, nah, they've just not. lost, was it 2-0? Yeah, 2-0 to West Ham. You know exactly what it was. You yeah, know, I want him to say it. I know he knows. I know he knows. I want him to say it, that's why. Do you yeah. know, I'll be so real, yeah? Mm. Come, so you see how we dropped points? So we drew 1-1 against Liverpool mm. uh, last week. And then, obviously, West Ham 2-0. You know how we were comparing um, the top six midfielders in the mm -hmm. Prem a couple of weeks ago? And... You guys were saying, or oh, we, we all agreed, Rice, sixth place, yeah? yeah? And then you guys said, Odegaard, fifth. And you said, Bruno, Bruno Bernardo. Yeah. Bruno Bernardo, Rodri, and Kevin De Bruyne. After the watching that game, there's no way you can say Odegaard's fifth. Only reason I say that, only reason I say that. He lost. I know he lost. <laughs> he didn't score. I know he lost. Well, the only thing I'm going to say is that Odegaard performance, it's like, how can I say it? It's like, uh, it's like watching James Madison at Leicester last season. Or the two seasons, like he's he's the only one pulling the strings. I don't like that. that. I don't like that comparison. Your Arsenal football club, your Arsenal football club. You I'm, not I'm not comparing Arsenal to Leicester. I'm saying that individual performance, the way Odegaard was playing, he was the only person trying to make stuff happen. Every time we got to the byline, it's because Odegaard was doing his magic. We can say the same about Bruno. Then. Exactly. Nah, Bruno ain't doing that. He's not doing that. Sorry. Bruno is I'm when not we're playing. It. When I'm we're playing it. bad. Bruno is the only one actually trying to make something happen. Sure and you're right. saying the exact against same Villa, thing. Natural, but Bears. Against Villa, Bruno played very well. Did he? Did you yeah, watch did. the game? I did. Bruno played very well. Did he get an assist? Oh, no. I did didn't. Odegaard get an assist yesterday? We lost, we didn't score. Okay. <laughs> exactly, then. Exactly. Fair enough. Exactly, my like point. Like I, said, <laughs> like I said, it hasn't been great, but I don't like to be too... Um, you know, Arsenal fans, they're very reactionary. Mm. Do you know what I mean? As soon as we drop points, well, even if we draw, because I think it was when we drew against Tottenham, I think it was, mm. that everyone started crying, chaos and whatnot. I don't think the situation is that bad because at the end of the day, we still are second. Obviously, I think Liverpool are ahead by two points mm -hmm. and then Villa are away, And then I think it is... Man City after that. Yeah, Man City <coughs> after that. Mm. Overall, it's not bad. It's not, a, it's not a bad picture, but things need to change. But I want to shift the focus away from Arsenal. Oh, no. yeah. I want to shift away from Arsenal. And I want to ask you guys about Villa. Villa. Okay. Because I know from first-hand experience here yeah, under Unai Emery, mm -hmm. what things can be and what, like <coughs> how it seems on the outside and mm. how it really is. Yeah, mm. Emery's notorious for getting people striking, getting people scoring and that high attack, high tempo attacking style of, of, of play. Mm. But holding on to leads is not his thing. I remember I said that I don't think Villa will... Um, I think it was you that asked me, actually. Mm. You're saying, oh, how sure, how sure can you be that Villa won't finish like, oh, above four. us? Mm. And it's because of that depth that I said. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking it might also be Emery. Because there's so many times, yeah, uh, when he was at Arsenal... No, no, I know you're shaking your head. I know you're shaking your head. But there's so many times when he was at Arsenal that we'd be going up 2-0, even yeah. potentially 3-0, and going close to either dropping points for it to be a draw... Or being under pressure for the next 20 minutes of the game where mm. in 3-2, where it should be a game with 1-4-0. I get what you're saying, bro. But at the same time, I think with Villa, one thing that we have to make sure that we're not doing is heightening our expectations. Of them. Villa, mm. a couple of seasons ago, were bottom half fighting relegation. And that was the expected standard for Villa year after year. <clears throat> so Emery is coming now and he's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Yes, they haven't yeah. been consistent. And we saw the, cap uh, the capitulation against Man United. But at the same time, you have to realise that they're not supposed to be in the top four. They're not supposed to be competing with the clubs that we support. Yeah. Mm. Not really. They haven't... Yes, they've spent some money, but they don't actually have the players to actually finish in the top four. They are overachieving. So if they do do it, it will be an overachievement. Yeah. But yeah. again, you have to also remember that them being in this position right now is really good because... Getting towards February, March, when Arsenal is still in the Champions League, you've got big games coming up, big injuries could happen. As the Villa don't really have that. I don't know if they, they, they nah, have European football at the moment. Conference League. Conference mm. League, but the squad they have, I don't, 
I don't think they can't handle that. Whereas with Arsenal, it's your first season back in the Champions League. Sorry, mm. guys, I've got a little issue with my throat. <laughs> Pause. No comments. But, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't think you guys will be able to handle it as well as Aston Villa might be able to, especially because Emery has done it before in terms of winning, um, not winning, but finishing good place with Villarreal and winning the Europa League. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like <clears throat> you guys are, should be really looking back then, Aston Villa looking forward. Them being in this position is good for them, but you mm. guys need to be wary about how good they can become in the coming weeks. You know, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And I think my, I was actually kind of happy when you guys beat Villa because I was like, if, because they beat us, mm. they beat City, um, I wasn't sure. I think, I don't know if they beat Liverpool or they, I'm not really sure. No, they didn't beat Liverpool. I think they drew, well. they drew. But anyhow, they're then beating United. Mm. Bro, that's like, that's like all the heavyweights in the league done. That they yeah. already dusted. Mm. That would have been, yeah, that would have been concerning. Yeah. But it's a good thing that you guys managed to come back. Even Garnacho on the right wing. Put some respect to the name as well. He's look, no, he's looking good. He's, he's looking good. good on the right wing. I think, I think you guys, you guys' right winger was right in front of you. I think what you get, what you lot say about or what you just said about the um, going to the extremes with Arsenal as mm. Arsenal fans do you know one yeah. week you're like right these players are great best players in the world then the other extremes are these lot are all shit they all need to leave the club mm. I think that's what I don't like from United fans as well and okay. someone like Garnacho, that's the first game we've seen him play right wing this season mm. and I like him I do really like him same as Hoyland same as a lot of the United team I do like some of our players there but we can't get too excited and think, yeah, because he played that one game in right wing and he played well, then that means he is our nailed on right winger mm -hmm. and he must start mm -hmm. every game because that's what a lot of United fans will say. Mm -hmm. They will say, right, cool, every game now until the end of the season, go Rashford, Hoyland, and Garnacho. And then as soon as Garnacho makes one mistake, it goes back the other way again. He shouldn't be starting this, this, that. Rashford played well as well. And yeah, did he? For the, he did play well. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay. And for a lot of the season, people have been saying, oh, drop him, don't play him, don't play him. Then play him right wing, play him right wing, play him right wing. Now Rashford go back to left wing. Yeah, Rashford. Okay. Rashford. But I think one thing that we as fans need to find is just that balance of, okay, cool. Is this player playing well? Or are they just in good form? Have they just had one good game? Or is this player playing really poorly? Or they just had one poor game. Do you know? I think I, I get what you mean, but I was gonna say that out of all your right wingers that you played there, mm. even though that's his first game, I don't think I've ever seen Anthony play a game like that. Mm -hmm. Where it's you guys are two 0 down, and he's still like it's, it's. And people need to remember that even though they're professional footballers, anyone who's played football, when you go one 0 down, it's like okay, cool, it's just mm -hmm. one 0 and then 2 you know, especially the way that you did, and so yeah. quickly as well, it's very mm -hmm. easy for players' heads to drop. Mm -hmm. So the fact that, especially at a young age, he's still saying, nah, do you know what? It's cool. Like, And he grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck and actually brought us back. And exactly. I thought, with, with, right on the pitch, for example, I know we can't do um, if, buts, and maybes, but I feel like if Anthony was starting and Garn actually wasn't available, we don't win that game. You know, I, don't think, I don't think Hoyland gets up for it. I don't think Rashford... Rashford in the game was good. Don't get me wrong, he was good, but it didn't seem like he was going to score that game. In my opinion, it didn't look like no, he was yeah, going to score. It didn't look like he was going to score. Not at so, all. with having a player like Garnacho um, on our squad, it's really good for us, especially now that we have a right winger that can play there. And obviously, we've got Ahmad coming back soon. Hopefully, he can get a start. But again, another extreme, I don't want United fans thinking, let's get Ahmad back. He's the answer. He's not. He's a still young kid. He hasn't actually started for us game in, game out for Man United yet. He mm. did it for Sunderland in the Championship and we haven't seen him in the Premier League yet. Yeah. But then, let's talk about Man United right now in, in our position because it's not great, Raf. It's, it's not, not great. It's not great. You're At least right. said it. It's not great. You're right. It's not great. But however, I'm a bit optimistic for how our season will end. And the reason why is because we're looking at teams like Arsenal, like City at times, like um, Tottenham over the weekend. They just lost as well. You know, teams above us are dropping points as well. Mm. And Aston Villa, I don't know how long they will keep up with this because as I said before, they are overachieving. Newcastle are dropping points as well. And mm, then next God. they have City, Liverpool and Villa, I think, in a row. So they're going to drop some more points. West Ham aren't going to stay in fifth place or sixth place, wherever they are, yeah. till the end of the season. So, sorry, before we get into West Ham, I think in as much as I'm not happy with the way Man United's season has started, mm. I am slightly optimistic because we have the likes of Casemiro, Mount, Malassia, Martinez yeah, coming, coming back. back. Yeah. You see, I would I would be very um, positive about them coming back, but we also need to remember how inconsistent we are, regardless of the players that are on the pitch. We can lose a game to to Bournemouth. We lost to Bournemouth three 0 at home. Regardless of our injuries, we should be winning that game. Yeah, we should not be winning um, losing three 0 Sorry, Facts. so it's a thing where 
I'd be so optimistic saying, oh, we got all these players coming back, we'll be much better. Yes, in theory, we'll be better, but realistically, are we actually going to be playing any better? And with you, I'm actually quite surprised you said that with you being Ten Hag out, mm -hmm. being optimistic, thinking that we can actually win some games because if I'm if I'm a manager out, I'm not optimistic. I'm thinking, listen, this guy needs to go before it gets any better. Well, that comes that comes down to balance. I think even though I'm not, I'm a fan of Ten Hag, but I just don't think he's going to win us a Premier League title or a Champions League. Right. And to me, if you're not going to win either of those things at the club, there's no point you being here. We might as well mm. get rid of you from now. That's my thing. That doesn't mean that I don't feel as though we can win some games and finish mm. in the top four this season, mm. because I think we can. However, it's going to be that same thing of, okay, we're in good form. Man United are playing well. Can we build on this? And then cool. We don't build on it again. Mm. That's where I'm True. coming from. I, I, but, I hear that. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. And I think that's probably like the perfect way to sum it up. I don't think Ten Hag will get you a league title sort of yeah. sort of Champions League. I, I don't think he's the one. I think it's, I, I still think it's a bit too early to say. I mean, I'm not his biggest supporter. And I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm like three strikes and out. He's already got one strike from you about what happened. What, what was the, the strike about? Who did we lose against? Nah. I think it was, was it Liverpool that I gave him the strike? I don't know. I gave him a strike for something recently. If you didn't give him a strike because of that 7 0 Liverpool <laughs> performance, then I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, it wasn't that. It was this season. But it's a thing where I don't, I think it's just a bit too early to say you're 10 hug out or like he's only, he's been here one season and a half now. He's won a trophy. He's finished in the top four in his first season. It's a bit harsh to say you're, you don't see any progress or you don't think that he can take us anywhere, anywhere soon. I feel like give him another season. At least let him finish this season. Let's see what oh, he no, finish. Oh, no, yeah, 100%. And then I think by this time next season, I will know for a fact whether or not I feel like we can get anywhere with this manager. This time yeah. next season. So if you ask me at this point next season, I'll have an answer for you. But at the moment, I think we stay with him. Do you know this? I think you have to factor in the amount of money you spent and the fact that he's handpicked most of these players. Obviously, we did mention it a yeah. couple of weeks ago where we said like Casemiro wasn't his main, um, wasn't his number one target. I think yeah. he said the same for Varane. Mm -hmm. But still, at the end of the day, like, as a manager, mm. you know you're not going to get every single one of your targets. You yeah. must know that. And can I just say, on the flip side of that, coming on to that West Ham, a manager, David Moyes, he didn't, he didn't want to spend more than 30 million on Scott McTominay. Mm. Didn't want to spend more than 30 mm. million on Maguire. Mm -hmm. And now they're above us in the table and they've just beaten Arsenal, who many were saying are the title favourites. So I think sometimes it's not just about the tactics and it's not about getting your best player, but it's actually about motivating your team to put mm. up a fight. Mm. And that's something that I really admire David Moyes for because I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he gets a group of players to say, yeah, cool, we're going to fight for this man. We're going to fight for the badge. I mean, none of them wanted to play for West Ham growing up. None of them maybe mm. even thought they would be playing for David Moyes growing up. But somehow he's got them competing. But you can't, you can't, I, don't, I feel like that's a good point. Don't get me wrong. But when David Moyes at Man United, where was the, the cultivated that, factors? Where was, you know, different. that... That's different. I don't understand why if the manager is there... He should be having the ability to be able to talk to the players and get them to to come on board. Maybe it's because West Ham is a quote unquote a smaller club. The type of players you sign. No, but the reason why I think it didn't work for him at United is because you didn't even give him a full season. That's 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 my that's one of my main gripes mm. with the fact that you guys had him. Because fair enough, if he had finished the season like what did you guys finish that year? Seventh. Seventh. Cool. If he had done the whole season and you got to finish seventh, then I'd be like. Mm, Okay, maybe there is a right yeah. to sack. I mean, it was near enough to see. It was near enough. The Wasn't whole it like February or something? No, it was a bit later than that. It was. It was close to the end of the season. But okay. I, I, I still hear what you're saying anyway, though. Mm. Even because even with West Ham last year, yes, they won that Conference League, Ooh, they but were they almost, still but they still finished quite low in the Premier they finished League. Seventeenth. So yeah. and they then now second the season life. again, he's got them fighting, and now they're fifth or sixth yeah. place. Yeah, it's. It's a, it's a difficult one, and I just want to say that Kudus and Paqueta link up that we're crazy. seeing, crazy, mm, bro. Crazy. Yeah. What do you guys crazy. think of um, Tottenham season so far? Halfway through now, you know, Madison's out still. It seems like um, Richardson is finding mm. some form in terms of goals. Yeah, Son, it, Son is still being Son. Do you know what I mean? What do you guys feel? How far do you think Tottenham can can take this? Yeah, it's only one word: roller coaster. Yeah, and mm. that's the that is Tottenham all the time. Consistent. Mm. They are. You saw it after ten games; they were top of the league. Mm. People are saying, oh, um, <laughs> I think they said they had scored more goals than the Invincibles at this time, whatever. I don't know why whenever they talk about Tottenham, they always want to bring in the Invincibles, but it's nice. what it is. As soon as they said that, everything went to shit, yeah? Mm. Madison got injured, uh, Van der Ven's hamstring got popped, Romero got a red card, yeah. Pesuma got a red card, everything just started going wrong. And they lost, I think, five games on the bounce, or they were winless about um, four mm. or five. Now they've won their last like two or three games. Cool, they're finding their feet again. They just lost, they just lost to... Um... 
Oh wait, they lost well, to Brighton. Yeah, 14. They did. Brighton 14. Yeah, 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 that's the roller coaster. That you're exactly. Talking about. Yeah, sorry, they even just got smoked. Because I was even yeah. watching that game. It was it's quite bad. I think it was four nil, and then yeah. they got one, and then they got two. But it was it was horrible, absolutely horrible. And that's that's why I from Tottenham. That's why whenever like people ask me about, oh, Tottenham are doing well, are you scared? Or da, 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 da. Listen, as an Arsenal fan, and just because I've seen Tottenham over the last at least fifteen years, mm. fifteen years saying that I actually know what football is happening mm. and whatnot. As good as Tottenham get, they're still Tottenham. Yeah. As good as they get, no, no, no. As good as they get, something Tottenham will always happen. I, I know, I know that Champions League fan. I think 2019, you were shitting, Ricks. I know. For the, for the first 20 minutes, yes. <laughs> because for the first 20 minutes, Harry Kane and Son were looking smoky. Mm. I said, oh, we might have a problem mm. on our hands here. And especially mm. because we had, um, I think we were facing Chelsea in the Europa League at the time as well. Yep. And I, knew, I can't lie to you. I'm going to say this now. I knew before that European League game that uh, yeah because yeah. it's Hazard's has, has, has victory that <laughs> we all did. I do, I do. Hazard's victory that like, no do you know this? the only thing that gave me motivation that we might not lose is because we beat them in the in the normal season isn't it but Hazard on a victory lap in Europe whatever no. but yeah as good as Tottenham get they're always Tottenham they're always going to find a way to either self destruct or mm. their players just can't keep their heads like Romero that's one of the reasons why I say I'll never say he's world class until he changes all of this hot headedness obviously. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's out for about six weeks, I think, with a hamstring issue. But then they've got Basuma in midfield, who is serving a four-game suspension because mm. he's already gotten two red cards before the half of the season. Yeah. Mm. Two red cards. It's crazy. It's, it is crazy. Certain yeah. players need to... like some, Certain players have that hot head stuff about them. And it's, it takes a certain player to be able to hold it back. Like, mm. Casemiro is one of them players. Martinez is one of those players. You've got quite a bit. Anthony, Bruno. Mm. You know, these certain players that do have hot head, but it takes a certain amount of player to... To hold it back and hone it in and use it at a certain but time. But I think there's there's a difference though because like some of the names you mentioned, like Bruno for example, or Mar there are or Martinez. There are some players who will go in studs up, mm -hmm. get that red card. That's a Casemiro. That's the Romero that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Potentially then, Martinez. I feel like he has it in him, but he hasn't. I haven't seen him. Do exactly. exactly. That's so we can't really say that. So mm -hmm. it's a stereotype, man. They don't okay. like our players, it? bro. I, th I think I don't think Martinez is actually like that. You it, said it that. Seems, no, but it seems like that. But I don't think he's actually. No, that's what I'm like saying. No, there's he, a difference. No, no, he actually is like that. There's, a, is like there's that. a difference between some players who are a bit aggressive, mm. but they're not actually dangerous in the way they tackle. It's mm. aggressive, but it's not really dangerous. But then there are some players you like Romero are very reckless. Yeah. Um, I mean, Marcus Rojo was like that a little bit. Eric Bailly was like that a little bit. All I'm going to say is there's one common factor between all of those players or most of those players that you said. <laughs> I'm not going to say it here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's yeah, one yeah. coming back. I know. Up and whatever. <laughs> I've got one last thing before we wrap up. What are your takes on so far? Obviously, we've seen half the season. So far, your takes on the VAR's decisions on the game of this season? Because we just saw one again yesterday with Arsenal and West Ham. Yeah. What's your take on VAR? Do you feel like they've they've gotten most decisions right or wrong? And in terms of them being here for the long long haul, of the, do you know what? The, the league? How do you think it's going to? No be? one even knows if VAR have got it right or wrong. Because mm. there's no consistency. Mm. So one week, they're giving something. The next week, they're not giving it. What we want is consistency. And to me, if it was up to me, and they will never do this because the amount of money that's gone into it, but I would scrap VR right now. Because I looked at the <clears throat> Arsenal-West Ham game and I saw... Gary Neville, um, this was on, whilst I was on my phone, mm. Gary Neville doing that thing with the ball on the line and how it looks different at another angle. Mm. And they were talking about it on the TV as well. And I was just thinking, this is fucking ridiculous now. It is. We, like the game has become a science. We're looking at these fine, fine margins. And before VAR, we weren't really looking at these things. Nope. Cool, the ref might get a decision slightly wrong. We yeah, people on. are a bit annoyed and we get over it. Yeah. We get over it. And now we're talking about the referees more than the game. And people are using the referees' decisions and the linesman's decisions and VAR's decisions as an excuse because everyone is expecting everything to be perfect. So for me, get rid of VAR. Can I just... Yeah. In or out? I'd be in the way. I don't know because his no, legs no, no, in the no, way. No. I don't know because his legs in cool. the way. Because all I'm going to say is his right leg is off. Mm. But, but no, wait, 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 wait. Let me just say, let me just say, his right leg is off. I'm going to put this on camera so you guys can see what I'm talking about yeah. as well. His right leg is off. You can see the ball. And his right leg is not all the way off though because okay, cool. you can see the post that. right next to his leg. I hear that, I hear that, I hear that. <laughs> what I'm going to say is, this is what we're playing with a football, not a fucking beach ball. But you're not, listen. Yeah? But you're not, this we is not what we're talking about. It's, it's yeah. silly though. Nah, this is just, 
The game that we fell in love with growing up is because it had it imperfections. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every game was different. Every game was unique. How, if you want, every, it, it ruins the game if you want everything to be perfect because essentially we can't make every game perfect. Yeah, it's which, impossible which is to make it true. perfect. So it's going to be unfair the, in certain the only situations. Thing, the only thing I'm asking for, yeah, from mm. VAR is for people to use their brains. Yeah. I also want VAR, like the deliberation that's going on. Mm. I want I want to hear it. Mm. I don't want to hear any whatever fabricated or I don't even want to hear version it. that you're I doing. Do. No, no, no. I want it to be like NBA. I just want to watch the game. I just want to watch. No, no. It it needs to be. We need to start taking note from American sports, bro. Because as fans, fair enough, you might not want to hear it in the stadium. But fans that are watching, we need to be hearing what's going on. Because we can't just be hearing uh, Ali McCoy and all these other guys Mm. just talking in the background and just saying, oh, yeah. What I want to watch are two teams trying to win a game of football. That's what I want to watch. Yeah. And I and cool, if the referee gets a decision wrong, yes, it's annoying. I get annoyed when they get it wrong with Man United. What I don't want to happen is that it goes to VAR for 10 minutes and then they make it even worse. Or let they, me, or they still get it wrong. Let me say something. Mm. Cool. Champions League final. Mm. It's 1-1. One, one. You guys are playing, I don't know, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid. Pick your mm. opponent. In the dying minutes of the game, mm. they score a goal that is similar to that where the ball looks like it is completely off. Mm. Goes to VAR, mm-hmm. five six minutes of deliberation. They can't find a conclusive angle. Mm-hmm. You guys end up losing the game because that goal stands. Are you not going to be pissed? Are I'm going to be. be heated? Are you not going to start calling for I would, VAR? I would and... be pissed. However, if it was a thing where everything was scrapped and the referee said the ball was in, like the on field, they said there was no VAR and the referee said the ball was in. Hey ho, it is where it is. But I'll be more pissed if we went to VAR and I'm like, like, do you know? Do you know yeah. that makes sense? Okay. You know what I mean? yeah. All I'm gonna say is I think the one way we can improve situations like this from happening because this is the second time it's happened to us. Yeah. Newcastle. But last week, or was it last week, two weeks ago, Oda got handball, handball the ball. Yeah. That's I, a penalty. That you guys penalty. got away with it. That is a penalty. That's I mean, everyone's, everyone's getting their no, own bit. Like, no, you I guys know. got away with it against against us as well. We've got Nacho. That was being, offside. Oh, you see, it. see, that's in your opinion. No, it's, because he was offside. And then also, the, that's and then the way also they drew the line. With um, Gabriel holding back Hoyler when he's about to shoot, pulling him down. That's a penalty. penalty. That's not a penalty because that was too soft. The same uh, thing. See, okay, what is too soft? This is what I mean. Let the referee who is on the pitch, who has been trained, make the decision. All right, cool. That's too tough, too soft. We get because, over it. Because yeah, the offside, because when it goes, and when that's it goes and to that's the offside, when it goes to decision, on field, it was a goal. I hear, no, 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 you know I, mean? I, hear, yeah. I hear that. I get that. What I'm saying is, when he actually looked at it, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, he was marginally offside. The one with Hoyland, that's too soft. We've yeah, see, we've seen, fair we've enough. Seen, yeah, and, and I was the referee that said that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, VAR, I'm fine with VAR that. intervened mm-hmm. and they said, oh, no, it's not. It's too soft. And the referee, referee already said I'm that. fine with that. What I'm trying to say is that if the referee has said it's too soft, cool, I confirm it. That's fine. But when it goes to VAR, they better get it right. It needs to be perfect. If yeah. they're not going to get it right every single time, scrap the whole thing. Nah, I, mm, yeah. I think I think what it is is it's not actually VAR that's the problem. I said this before. It's not VAR. It's the referees that are using VAR. That's what I mean. They need training. Them. They need training, and they need to stop being so proud and thinking that oh no, we're the Premier League. We can do it our way and whatever. They need to start using the same technology that UEFA use when they're doing yeah, Champions yeah. League because the offsides are never wrong. They get it down to the finest line of the yeah. law, and it's always correct. The only thing I'm going to say to get rid of things like. Um, whether or not the ball has gone on and off, bro, use goal line technology for the whole, for the whole, for the whole thing, for the whole pitch, yeah. please. Because that will, that will stop it once yeah. and for all. Because before there was goal line technology, it was all of that, oh, did it go in? Did it not go in? There's the infamous goal or not goal, um, England versus Germany. Crossbar, bounce over the line out. and bounce back out. Mm, Do you yeah. know what I mean? If goal line technology was there. We go through. Since goal line technology has come through, all of these goals that aren't actually goals, we think they've crossed the line mm. and they've shown it. When you think about, I think it was three seasons ago, John Stone's goal line clearance against Liverpool. Mm. Goal line technology proved that the whole ball did not go over the line. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If there wasn't goal line technology, then Liverpool fans, and we all know how Liverpool fans are, they'll still be calling for a rematch, they'll be calling for just that and the third. They would get over it. You have to get over it. I think, honestly, like I think we've all become such big babies in this thing. I I genuinely think the the more we head in this line, the worse football's going to get and the more of a science football will become. The referees are going to make mistakes mm. and what we may deem to be a mistake may not be a mistake to them. So mm. you're saying that, yeah, the referees who are using VAR need training, but you can train them. But when the letter of the law says, if it's deliberate, for example, 
Mm. How do you know what's deliberate then? Subjective. Yeah, true. It's, it's, a lot it's, of these things it is are case subjective. By, it is case by case. And the thing is, I think we need to accept that it will never be perfect. It will no, never be perfect. No sport is perfect. But let, let's look at um, the yeah, say, quick, FPL. Quick, let's talk about FPL. But hold on, before we go there, yeah, yeah. what I do want to say is that I've had a very bad five weeks, okay? Up until about five weeks ago, I was I was I was good. I was doing good, especially in the TFL one, um TFL, TFW um league, I was doing pretty well. And obviously yeah. our, our personal leagues, I was doing well. And where you know? Past listen, Dang. I've Damn. forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten a couple of times, so I'm not doing too too well. But um 59th, bro. Tell them. Tell if them. You're, if you're still playing um TFW in your top of the league, comment below, tell us where you are in, in the league, mm, you know. Yeah. Obviously, there is a prize at the end of the season, so if you're still playing, props to you for top. Props to you. Who's top yeah. right now? Yeah. Um, right now, top right is... now is Mustakim Chowdhury. Shout him yeah, out. Shout out you. Yeah, by 21 points as well. So quite a healthy lead. Mm -hmm. And just a recap on what the prize was. We said um, there's two prizes, two £50 cash prizes, mm -hmm. one for the head-to-head -head league and one for the classic league. Ooh. And at the moment, mm -hmm. Mids, you are in... No, I'm going to read it out. No, I, I know. Do you want to read it out? Read no, it out. Say, it. say it. They I'm, need to know. I'm in, I'm in 44th place. Woo! I'm Damn! A, I'm a... <laughs> Wait, where are you? Me? I'm 19th, bro. Okay, first. I'm healthy. I'm this, guy, say, hold, this guy was not talking like five weeks ago. He was crying. Yeah. And now he's no, here. I've been there, bro. I've been... I just dropped down, um, actually. Right now in the league, I, I am 62nd. Damn. In the head-to-head in the head -head league? Nah, nah, no, normal league. Head-to-head, -head, I'm 44th. Oh, head-to-head. Head-to-head, I'm in the... I'm 7th. Can't lie to you, I'm doing quite well. Seven. Shout out, um, oh, Joba Fakile at first place in the head to head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's going to get that. Yeah, yeah like, like you said, there are two prizes. There's £50 for the winner of each league. So, yeah, season's so not on over. Top of it. Season's not over. We'll see at the end of the season, innit? Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's not done yet. Yeah. It's but, not done yet. Hey, you know people have been taking out Haaland? Have you guys taken Haaland out your team yet? I haven't. I have taken him out. That's, that's why you're suffering. Because you need to take out We've got a wild mil. card coming up. I'll bring him in soon. Yeah, I use my wild card just quickly before they give us another one. Because mm. when we get to on either side of Christmas, I use my one quickly. Brought in Son, Poro, uh, mm. Alvarez. Alvarez bagged. And they kept, I think they kept, no, they didn't keep clean sheet. I think he bagged and got um, man of the match or something like that. So okay. he got me a nice, mm. healthy eight points. But uh, don't worry, I'll be back. I'll be climbing back up very, very soon. Man, we'll see, man. Do you know what I'm <laughs> my hope is on the head-to-head -head league, not the other one. Because the other one... Long gone, innit? Hey. <laughs> 44th. That's hard to... Uh, yeah, that's hard to you can make it back, man. Listen, I was in the top I was in the top 15 up until five years ago. It can happen, bro. That's Where's cute. That I was fifth place. <laughs> I was hiding. Wait, where are you now, though? 15? I was definitely yeah, hiding. 19, past yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, whatever. Man, let's wrap it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys enjoyed our Premier League recap and our FPL recap, make sure to let us know in the comments below. Don't yes. forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Yep. That is Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And be sure to leave a like and subscribe to this video if you want more. But as always, what do we say? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Peace.